Hey everyone, I'm Ben Diedrich with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society of America, and I have a special guest here today. Hi, I'm Michael Flaherty, I'm an Irish brand ambassador based here in Chicago. So we're here today to talk about Irish whiskey. We are about to talk about some Irish whiskey. Let's get into it. So, in anticipation of St. Patrick's Day, which is just around the corner, we have three brand new single cask Irish whiskeys. And my trusty Irishman over here is joining me to taste through all three of them. Interestingly, all three of these whiskeys are from the same distillery, Distillery 51. They're all similar in age, ranging from 15 to 16 years old. And they're actually all matured in the same type of oak, which is a first fill bourbon barrel. So in Irish whiskey, we actually have a lot of sherry barrels, and that goes back to the days when the Irish the biggest drinkers of sherry barrels and of sherry in the world, surplus of sherry. So we get a lot of sherry finished whiskeys in Ireland. I'm becoming more and more of a fan of American version oak since moving here to America. But uh, we, <laughs> yeah. we use a lot of bourbon barrels in Ireland, so it's interesting to kind of see the effect they're going to have on the same whiskey and the same distillate. Yeah, I think, I think this will be interesting because, as I mentioned, we have all three whiskeys from the same distillery, same first fill bourbon barrel, same cast type, similar in age. Yet if you can notice here, all three of these are bottled in a different color coding. Uh, to associate with it various flavor profiles. So similar whiskeys on paper, but the result, as we can expect it, is to be very, very different. I mean, just see the one that has a gave on it. Oh, the gave, which oh, is this one. So uh, well, let's run through real quick. So the first one up is cask 51.8, which is called Funky Flowers and Tropical Fruits. 16 years old from a first fill bourbon barrel. Northern Ireland is this. It's printed, and I don't know if you can even see this or if it's in focus, but I'll show it. And for all of these, I'll link the description below. You guys can view it as well. Then we're going to go out to a 15-year-old. This is cast 51.10. That's the one you're talking yeah, about. That's one really agave, agave-induced invigoration. Pretty interesting name, I would say, there. Um, and the final one is cast 51.15, boiled sweets and cut flowers. 16 years old, also from a first fill bourbon barrel. And that's it. Uh, you tell me. I mean, in... As an Irish whiskey brand ambassador, do you get to taste a lot of single cast cast drink Irish whiskey? No, that's not something we get a lot of. Yeah. Uh, very, one or two that spring to mind, but it's not very often that we get to try them. Yeah. And something that's obviously going to happen further down in the future with so many new distilleries opening up, but uh, to get a single malt, single cast is pretty rare. So let's get into it. So as you can see, all of these bottles are unopened, yeah. and the reason I haven't opened them yet is just because I think it's fun to capture just genuine impressions. I haven't tasted any of these myself, nor has Michal. Um, so well, it'll be interesting to get in. We'll open these three. Do you mind opening yeah, this one? Let's I just go through. Okay, so first one, cask 51.8, which is named Funky Flowers and Tropical Fruits. So 16 years old, first fell bourbon barrel is what the whiskey's been matured in. And this is particular whiskey's 54.5% alcohol. Again, natural cask strength, pretty high. Yeah. Double still, isn't it? Yeah, so unique. I mean, it's pretty unique for, well, in the past, we've seen a lot more distilleries doing it now. But double distillation is something not really associated with Irish whiskey at the moment. Scotch whiskey, yeah. I mean, yeah. double distillation is, is is how single malt Scotch whiskey is made. But a lot of a lot of what you see in Ireland is in fact triple distilled, which is I mean, the main difference is being that it's a bit more lighter and elegant. I would say yeah. more defined yeah. the flavors. Double yeah. sometimes you make bigger, punchier kind of. Yeah. Right away, just just looking at this, all these are, are pretty similar in color. They're a very kind of light straw gold, if you will. Big fruit on the nose. Oh, really? Fun. It's really funky. Fun it's funky. funky and, yeah, it's funky and pretty. Yeah. You know, some of these names I think are, are spot on. Others kind of make you this, wonder. This kind of hits on the nose. Yeah. Quite literally. This hits on the nose. Funky, really fruity. I'd say in terms of fruit, maybe some some apples, more of like the orchard fruit type of aroma, with a little bit of chocolate fruit, some papaya, a lot of a lot of banana for me. Yeah, I'm definitely papaya. You get the papaya. Yeah, that's and the banana. One. Really, really fruity. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, that was pretty <laughs> fruity. Okay, right away, on the palate, burst of tropical fruit. I mean, what we kind of detect about the aroma, it's just straight away, it was explosive. Yeah. <laughs> Literally explosive. And hot. And hot. It's, it's, it's hot, pretty hot, but it's the fruit is really overwhelming and overpowering. In a good way. Chew it. I can chew it. It's like a, yeah. it's like a chewy, really chewy whiskey too. Water. No, yeah. Wow, probably one of the more tropical whiskeys I've had in a long, long time. I almost think it's a rum cask or something. Yeah, you kind of get that. Like it's just that that, that sugar cane influence. I think I think is there. Obviously, it's not in the whiskey itself. It's it's made from 100% malt. 
you know, the fruit comes out right in the front when they add the water and now the spice kind of coming up, kind of the back of your tongue, maybe yeah. basically kind of want to smile a little bit. I think and for me, I think this is a perfect springtime, spring afternoon, Saturday, Sunday, day we don't have much going on, just drinking whiskey, reading a book. Yeah, I think um, outside. Outside, nice. yeah. Freshly cut, freshly mowed lawn. <laughs> freshly mowed lawn. <laughs> yeah. Overall, I, I think beautiful whiskey. Okay, next up, cask 51.10. This is called Agave Induced Invigoration. There this, it is. This is the one I'm really excited for. You're excited I, for this one. It's a cool name. I, I want Agave. Agave and Irish whiskey are kind of two complete opposites. I, I think it can seem a little bit off-putting, maybe. I'm just gonna, we'll see. I think the Agave note is just thought of tequila. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm interested to see. Let's see how it compares to the first one. Oh, this one is very different. Yeah, this is, you can smell the cast strength on the nose a little bit. Not as sweet right off the bat. I get more malt, a bit of like toasted brioche. Yeah. It's, um, hard, it's hard to put your finger on that one. This one is interesting. I'm going to jump in and see. see <laughs> okay. See if I get the agave. Wow. That was expected. Did you get the agave? I don't know. I get more of the invigoration part of it. Maybe if, that's, if that makes sense. I would it's say quite yeah, lively. it is quite lively. I, I would actually say it's not as hot as the first one. The first one was a really pepper, explosive, yeah. very explosive. This one's a bit more mellow, which is interesting because this has actually spent one less year in oak yeah. than the first one. 15 years old versus 16 for the first one. Okay, third and final one. Cask 51.15, 51.15. Boiled sweets and cut flowers. Going back to 16 years old. Um, interestingly, though, I noticed this on these two bottles, 51.15 and one before it. I'm juggling bottles yes. here. Same date of distillation, the 22nd of May 2002, both both in a first fill ex bourbon barrel. So interestingly, born on the same day, aged for one year longer than this press one. It's completely different. Ooh. Boiled sweets. Yeah, it's quite rich. Oh, I like this one. I like, like this, this one. This one says boiled. I feel it's more yeah. like stewed fruits. Oh, That's this one. I guess the depth of this one. Yeah. I think you get stewed fruits. What, yeah, what kind of fruits do you? I mean, I know it's like you know when you stew down like apples and pears and stuff like that. Yeah. It kind of just that's kind of what I'm getting yeah. off of it. Yeah. So, you know, almost if you're gonna put it into a pie. You know, that's how you do it. But that's, that's, how you do it. I, that's I don't know. That's imagine how it goes. <laughs> there are parts of people. I am not a baker. Part. I am a whiskey drinker. <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot of flack. With that. Yeah, the first one. I mean, on the fruity scale, the first one was very freshly picked apples, right? Like just just yeah. slice up in a fresh apple. This one is, is very much more. Um, there's just more depth to it. Overall, yeah, that's you know? depth and complexity. Yeah. That's all kind of come before already. Oh, this is nice. Wow. Again with the wow. wow. <laughs> now that punch is heavy. Oh, there's a lot going on in that. There's a lot of weight on this whiskey. Real chewiness. Oh, look at this. You can even see it too in the glass too. It's the legs, the, the legs on this one are much thicker too. Oh, the depth of it all. Oh. Yeah, even though I had a lot of water to my by mistake, I still got that. <laughs> that sweetness is still going well. I'll match you in the water scale. <laughs> so if you're wondering, you know, which whiskey is right for your palate, I just, let's maybe run through real quick because it's, I think the biggest, I shouldn't say surprise, but the result is they're three very different whiskeys. Completely, I'm different. I'm completely different. On paper, they're the same pretty much. They are the same on paper. I mean, with the exception of a year here and there, but same cask type, first fill bourbon barrel, similar ABV, similar age, but three very, very, very different whiskeys. I like the beauty of, beauty of single casks. Yeah, yeah, it does. And the effect it has. So, I mean, if you're looking for one of them, just maybe we run through. What do you think this one's most suitable for? Or, or who would get into this? Or I think that's just a great summer, springtime whiskey outdoors. That initial like, explosion of all the flavors, it's, it's amazing. Kind of don't want to waste it in a highball, but it would make an awesome yeah. highball. Refre it would be yeah, refreshing. Really refreshing. Like, it's a refreshing kind of drink, yeah. 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 Like uh, Simbai Lake or something like that, drinking a highball, maybe a slice of orange in it. Yeah. I think it will go well. All right. Then the second one, agave induced invigoration. Did you get the agave? I got the agave when I added some water to it all. Yeah. That's a real whiskey to sit down and think about. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's one. You know, you bring it to a whiskey club and be like, try to decipher the code what, yeah. of what it is, but it's yeah. got a great depth, great kind of the palate changes the whole time. Yeah, water definitely helps out a lot. Yeah, I definitely think the first one it doesn't take you don't have to be the most sophisticated of whiskey connoisseurs to really appreciate just the beauty of this whiskey. It's very this one, I think, is it's not that it's it's you can't discern it if, if you're relatively new to whiskey. 
but there's a lot more there, I think, to think about. And that's not necessarily makes it better than this one. It's just different. Um, I can't I can't really wrap my head around the, the time to uh, day or, or the occasion. It's definitely kind of more maybe uh, before not dinner. Not nocturnal. Not nocturnal. You think it's a, yeah yeah maybe after dinner. Um, but you know our palates are pretty fresh right now, which is an advantage. Yeah. But so uh, third one, what do you think? Third one's awesome. Yeah. Third one, again, wow. <laughs> um, the third one was really, really good. I think I had a little bit too much wine the second time too well, but the, uh, definitely the nose on it, I think, was my favorite. You get that, it, uh, the boiled candy, but I always, like I said, boiled uh, stewed fruits that really came through. And that's what I really liked about it. Palette yeah. was great. Yeah. Big finish, very heavy, complex whiskey. Yeah. Takes water pretty well. Not not so well. They should pour too many into it, though. It's almost like the third one, this Cast Fifty One Point One Five, has elements of both into it, right? It has this. This one is I think the most fruit forward, yeah. most tropical. This one brings in that toasted brioche and kind of baked goods aroma. Um, yeah. And this one has a little bit of both. It's sweetness. Yeah, it's a different sweetness, right? Exactly. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. It kind of combines the best of both yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the cool thing for me is that I think they still embody what a lot of uh, Irish single malts are. But they're really brought to life by the single cask, you know, that higher proof that we don't often get in Ireland. Um, the, you know, the fruitiness, the punchiness, the complexity of it all is something I think you, I really appreciate. Even the fact that you, two different casks, well, same just that we assume, yeah. but two different casks, the, the world of difference it makes. Yeah, I think, I think the uniqueness of each of them speaks to single casks. And just it, this whole process has been really eye opening, even for me, because to taste a lot of single cask whiskeys. Um, so yeah, so anyway, I'll link below in the description of this video uh, a link to each of these whiskeys and then you can you can try all three if you'd like or just try one of them. Uh, but we'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have tried one of these whiskeys, I should say, uh, comment below. We want to hear what you think. Ultimately, we're a club of, of whiskey lovers and so it's really our collective opinions are what really make this experience what it's, it's yeah, meant to be. Everyone has a different one. What I yeah. actually really love to do is compare them to some Highland whiskeys yeah, and, yeah. and kind of see, see what, you know, your typical single malt scotch drinker would think of these. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting kind of little battles going on. Listen, thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I'll be doing a lot more videos just like this, introducing other whiskeys. Uh, any closing remarks? No, well, thanks. Slancha. Slancha. This is totally from Amazon. It's like, it's like more toasted beer. Yeah, they want. Toast of brioche. <laughs> you get that? I mean, that's a. Well, I love. You don't trust brioche in I do. So I do. See the brioche and grilled cheese. Oh man. It's like my favorite thing I do is make grilled cheese at home. You're gonna put that on the end of the video. Like, <laughs> just like. <laughs> Great pairing with grilled cheese. Yeah, <laughs> I might.